from slowing the aging process to stopping a life-altering illness. Over 300,000 Canadians have type 1 diabetes, but a Winnipeg doctor thinks he's found a game changer. Red Sharon tells us how. It's become part of nine-year-old Katrina Tobin's daily life-saving routine, testing and reading the numbers. They're like how high my blood sugar is. So that tells you whether or not you need to have that insulin. That means I have to have insulin. Her mom, Donna, helps with the needle, one of over a thousand she will have to get this year and every year, all designed to make sure her blood sugar level is controlled. There we go. Three and a half years ago, Katrina developed type 1 diabetes, and life for this little girl and her family hasn't been the same since. I can't remember when I didn't have to have needles before I ate. Sometimes at 2 or 3 in the morning, one of us will get up and we will test her and see where her blood sugar level is. Yeah, so it's always a worry. You always think about it. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up is what's her number going to be. There are close to 300,000 children just like Katrina in Canada, a number that's growing not just here but in many countries across the Northern Hemisphere. The studies will be in four centres, three in Canada and one with our U.S. partner in Seattle. If Dr. Shane Tabak gets his way, he and a group of international researchers will find a way to turn that trend around. This will be the nerve centre for the entire trial. Their hope is vitamin D. The theory is that there's a direct relationship between the child's inability to absorb vitamin D from the sun and the onset of type 1 diabetes. Studies have already shown the further you get away from the equator, the higher the incidence of diabetes. In the last 25 years in Finland, for example, the level of type 1 insulin-dependent diabetes has more than doubled. That's right. As you go north, um, you get less and less direct uh, ultraviolet light to cause the body to make vitamin D. So you and that could be related to the onset of type it 1. Could be. Animal model studies have already shown intervention with higher doses of vitamin D can prevent the onset of type 1 diabetes. Now they want to do long-term testing to answer the question, will it work in humans? It would be a, a huge game changer for, for health in Canada to be able to prevent type 1 diabetes. A huge game changer requiring a huge financial commitment. Dr. Tabak and his team have applied for research funding of $10 million over the next three years. They will also need to screen tens of thousands of infants for this study. We only want to enroll babies who are at a relatively high risk of getting type 1 diabetes, and our statistician investigators have worked out that we would need 5,000 babies in the study. But to uh, find the 5,000 babies we need, we might have to screen 60,000 babies. <laughs> That's right, 60,000 babies. Uh, we test the children. And if but for Dr. Tabak, who's been involved in diabetes research since 1998, it's more than worth it. There are severe complications to having type 1 diabetes. Risks for kidney function and needing dialysis. Risks for developing uh, blindness. Risk of heart as well. Seeing the families and what they go through, seeing the children and what they go through, and wanting to make it go away. And that sort of set me on a research career that involved type 1 diabetes prevention. Dr. Tabak's team will know in weeks whether it gets the funding. And while it won't change little Katrina's life, her mom knows it was research that led to the discovery of insulin. We feel grateful that there's something we can do for her, but still hope that there will be a cure and that she won't have to live with this the rest of her life. As it is, says mom, Katrina is a real trooper, working on her violin even if her arm is a little sore. And she wishes the doctor and his team success because she doesn't want any more little girls to have to go through what she does every single day. Red Sharon, CBC News, Winnipeg.